Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, we're talking Honda K swaps. And what better car to be in than a Honda S2000 to be talking about K swaps? I think about a K-Swap, I'm thinking about an early series carbureted car or some neat little rear-wheel drive thing that had a pretty gutless power plant to start with. Pretty rare that you're thinking about a car like a Honda S2000 with an engine conversion. holding the record for the highest power to weight ratio out of an aspirated engine for quite a long time. How could you make it any better? Case swapping, of course. This thing, having the K24 engine, so the 2.4 litre, yeah, it's, it's lost some revs up top, but let's be honest, how often are you pinning this thing at 9,000 RPM? Yeah, then they, the F series does sound awesome there. But with the K series in this thing, it's got grunt. We didn't need to do a stroker kit on the F20. We didn't need to do anything like that. Just got the bottom end out of a family sedan, put a K20 cylinder head on it. Here we are. Don't worry, we didn't fully destroy this car. Still got an S2000 six speed behind it. Might even flick the aircon on. Ah, she idles up. Beautiful. All luxury con still. Beautiful. Sorry about that squeaking, you probably hear. That's this beautiful leather seat that I push back as far as I possibly can. So it's rubbing on the back here. My knees are on the dash. I'm definitely concentrating because if we have an accident in this, I'm screwed. Not sure if this is a bit of a joke still that all these guys are finding the smallest cars possible for us to take out and test drive or to tune or do conversions on or whatever. I feel like Donkey Kong in here, sit like this. While I've been talking about K series stuff, one of the things that has kept popping up is Siri off my iPhone. Every time I say K series, she thinks I'm saying Hey Siri right now, and she interrupts with a Yes, how can I help you? I don't need any help, thanks Siri. I'm saying K-Series. K-Series are awesome is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Uh, not really much I can do about it with my funny Australian accent. What I love about this car is that it hasn't lost any of its charm. The thing drives so nice. Uh, just feels like a standard car. And you know what? It's partly because it is. We've just replaced one factory engine with a different factory engine. It just happens to be that, in my opinion, the K-Series is just so much happier in this chassis. It loves it. Jeez, I'm sorry, guys. I know that's going to upset a lot of uh, S2000 and F20 guys. I, I do love the F20, don't get me wrong. The revs that that thing has is incredible. Obviously, when you add boost to either of them, they're both absolutely amazing. I think it's in this country at least, probably the accessibility of the K-Series for a swap like this, it's very achievable to do this. Um, you might even end up making money selling off your F-Series engine, putting a K-Series in it. <laughs> it's an unusual thing to think. It's not difficult to see why people would K-swap Miatas, Corollas, Datsuns, and most Hondas. A K24 series engine simply outperforms all of the other engines originally used in those cars. But the motor Honda stuffed in the S2000 is a different story. The F20C is a two liter, four cylinder inline four, famous for its 9,000 RPM redline. It also uses Honda's famous VTEC variable cam control system, which actuates between about 5,500 RPM and 6,000 RPM, depending on engine operating conditions. Having driven a few Honda S2000s over the years, I can confirm they're no slouch. So why would anyone want to K-swap an S2000? So one of the first things that you've got to wonder about is we've swapped a four-cylinder for a four-cylinder. Well, yes, we have. 
And because we started with such a good base in the F20C in the Honda AP1, we weren't gonna get a huge advantage, but it's a driving advantage. This thing was the F20C that's a two liter engine. We've changed it to a K24 bottom end with a K20A cylinder head. We've lost revs, but we've picked up torque. So in a platform like the S2000 or the AP1, it's something that is a little bit peculiar. Yes, I agree, but where we've actually gained in this car is that this thing had the F20C, which has been pulled out, sold for a huge amount of money. If this thing ever has any engine problems, it's not a drama. Just another K24, slap it in, and we're good to go. We've got factory Honda inlet manifold. We've got factory mounts. We've got factory everything. We've got the Honda S2000 gearbox. Admittedly, you do have to use a bell housing adapter in order to get the rear wheel drive gearbox onto the what was a front wheel drive engine, but that's no big deal. So like I said, when you're converting from an F20C to a K24, you're already starting with a good base, but what if you start with something like a 1.6 or a 1.8 litre MX-5 or something like an MR2? You're starting with something that is relatively low powered to begin with. So just doing that conversion, there's huge horsepower, huge torque gains. Um, can't say enough good things about the K24 engine. In the early 2000s, the car manufacturers were really chasing it for this sports car-y sort of coupe rear wheel drive thing. Cars like the Honda S2000, the Mazda Miata or Mazda MX-5, um, and the Toyota MR2. So of those three, it seems like the S2000 won the battle. It's held the most value, it still looks the most current, so it's, it's a still a beautiful shape. Even today when you see one on the road, you really do think, wow, that is a nice new looking car. But beyond all of that, you never really see a Honda S2000 with a Mazda Miata NA 1.6 litre conversion. But you do see a million Miatas with the Honda F4, probably more, more popular, but as a K-series swap. So I really do think Honda absolutely nailed it in every way. And this platform now is what every other manufacturer doesn't want swapped into their car. And you know what all those sports cars from the 2000s had? Soft tops, no roofs. I haven't really driven many convertibles. I absolutely love the idea of the electric roof in this one. So mate, it's a beautiful, beautiful winter's day here in Sydney. I'm gonna do the rest of this adventure topless. At 87 millimeters, the K24 has the same cylinder bore as the F20C, but a much longer stroke. 99 millimeters as opposed to 84 millimeters and that's where the extra engine capacity comes from it also has a different head design but more importantly the k24 has an i vtec system which means unlike the f20c it also has continuously variable cam timing control you see the k24a was designed with economy in mind and being able to control cam timing certainly helps with that but this, combined with a slightly bigger capacity, should also give the K24A a much flatter power curve and more low down torque. Something that in the real world translates to a better driving car and a better seat of the pants push. Now this particular car takes it one step further as it's got the K24 bottom end, but the head's been swapped out with a K20, which adds even more VTEC, yo. As it happens, I've tuned a near stock S2000 a couple of days ago, so I was keen to see just how this K-swap car would compare on the dyno. So we've just done a power run on this car and I've actually bought up a dynograph to compare this against a stock F20C powered S2000. Now, when I say stock, just keep in mind that the only mods on our comparison car with the F20C, it had a Haltec Elite 1500, it's here at Haltec, so it's been tuned. So that's the only difference. This one, it's got an Elite 1500 series ECU. Other than that, it's got the K20 head, K24 bottom end. If we look over at the dyno sheet, something that's interesting is that there's not a huge difference in the power. Well, not for the turbocharged crowd, but for the aspirated guys, big difference. It's 147 kilowatts at the wheels is the peak power. 
to 159 kilowatts at the wheels for the K24 series. So let's call it sort of 15 kilowatts in the top end is the difference. But here's where it gets interesting, where a dyno, that the total number on a dyno sheet can't give you the whole story. If we look back across at the dyno screen, I'm just gonna come down through the rev range here. The big block 2.4 liter is the pink line. The red one is the two liter F20. So if I just pick a random spot in the middle here, let's say 120 kilometers an hour, the F20 was making 95 kilowatts at the wheels. The K24 is making 134 kilowatts at the wheels. So like we talked about, you're not always revving the guts out of your car. Through the mid-range, the K24 has got 40 kilowatts at the wheels more. If you want to talk about torque at the wheels, this one's got the F20 had 317 newton meters of torque at the wheels. The K24, 448 newton meters. So that's the difference between torque and having RPM. Big difference there. And this thing, the reason why it drives so great is because of that big block engine. It's simply making more grunt through the mid-range, but up the top end, it does run out of legs. Now, normally when we do a what's so special about or an engine teardown on a particular make or model of engine, we've got the guys in the Holden camp picking on the Ford guys. We've got the Ford guys picking on the Nissan guys. We've got the Nissan guys picking on, well, everybody. But when we did the Honda K-Series teardown, not a lot of hate in those comments, guys. It, it would appear that the K-Series has no real natural enemy. It seems like it's great bang for buck. It seems like it makes good grunt when it's aspirated, better grunt when it's turbocharged, huge accessibility and great aftermarket support. So after driving this K24 powered S2000 RAM for the day, putting the top down, driving it in traffic, driving it down the freeway, it really does make just awesome drivable grunt exactly where you need it. As far as an aspirated engine goes, this thing makes unbelievable power at the wheels compared to that of a factory turbocharged engine which makes about a similar amount of power obviously in factory form so as far as an aspirated engine goes it really has no peer this thing makes unbelievable power for what it is it'll do it for a very long time it's not stressed so really all i can say is k stands for king i'll leave you with that thought thanks for sticking with me see you next time